In today's video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a raised bed out of a single pallet. Just before I get into this video, I want to let you know about a pre-order competition for my new book. And this is actually one of the printed copies. And if you buy it or pre-order it off Amazon, whether you have or you haven't yet, and hopefully you'll do it after watching this video, for everyone who pre-orders, you can use a link in the video description to upload the receipt uh, to be part of a really cool competition. So what we're doing is we're giving away three sub annual subscriptions to the Grow Your Own magazine. And then there are also going to be two kind of bespoke phone calls with me to go through your garden planning. And then a lucky winner or maybe unlucky winner will win a day's gardening with me with your travel and accommodation included. So make sure you pre-order this. Here we have the remnants of what's left from a single pallet. And the other thing that's really good about this design is you, apart from tools, you don't need any other materials to make it because I'm repurposing the good nails out of this pallet to actually put the raised beds back together. Now, as you can see, we've got six lengths here and six over there. They're different lengths, but these are going to be the long edges of the raised bed. Those are going to be the short edges. When you're splitting pallets, unfortunately, sometimes they do break away and you do get these not so good bits, but you can also repurpose those to use as a support structure to hold these together. And then these final things, I don't really know how you call them um, or what you'd call them, but these are actually really good at holding the sides of the pallets together so you get it in the corners and it really does strengthen it. So I think the most fun part, apart from actually the final assembly, is splitting a pallet. So you can use different things, but these, uh, this is kind of a wrecking bar um, by Roughneck and these are uh, specially designed pallet splitting tools. But if, if you have a crowbar or even a, even use the back of an axe, then that would work really well. So if you see, if I just use one of the ends to leverage, it just pops it up like that. By testing the different ends, you can actually sometimes save them from splitting. And then as you see, what you can do here is you can just pull it up and it'll pop out. But I'm gonna do that. And that's how easy it is. Now, please do be careful. These nails are not very friendly at all. So what you want to do is you want to make a pile away from where you're working so you don't end up stepping on them or you can point them away. So just be cautious with that. Now, as you start buying these, these kind of break away as well. And instead of having to try and use brute force to release this plank underneath it, if you've got the nail showing, instead you can hit down on the nails like that. I'll just turn this over so you can see how simple this is. You can then pull out the nails and then you've just got the smaller ones which are holding it in. And if all goes well, when I hit this, it should detach a lot easier. Like that. If you're unlucky with a lot of them splitting, you might have to start on a second pallet to just get enough wood. But if you are lucky and not many of them split like I did with that other pallet, then you should definitely be able to get a raised bed from just what you have here. These nails here are looking quite bent, so I highly doubt that I'll actually end up using those. But these nails here and here are looking a lot straighter, so hopefully I can reuse them. And then I just flip it over. And now I have a nail ready to use. So I put it in the good jar. And I think this is a fantastic raised bed to make if you don't have any money or you have a really low budget or you're trying to save money and you're looking at trying to create a garden, then 
it's amazing what some pallets can do. Hopefully you get the just now and I might do a video just about splitting pallets. But what I'm gonna do is create the four panels and these are really important. And what I love about pallets is that you have a big choice on how high you want them to be. So they can be either that high, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make them three high and that's quite a decent size. And you could probably get away with growing carrots, but definitely things like beetroot and all your brassicas and stuff. If you wanted potatoes, then I might add another layer. And I'm kind of looking through any possible off cuts and stuff. And this one here, I, I discarded because this part had split and it was a lot thinner, but it would still work as a really good support system. So I have a nail and these are one of the dud nails. And when I get this nail, and very simply, I just make a bit of a line, judging it by eye, and I know that that's a line that I'm gonna cut. I'm just gonna follow it down. And now I'm gonna use this as a template to do some more. I've now got these pieces all ready and I've got this jar of nails and what you want is to get the smaller nails. You need about five or six for each support structure. So I'm just gonna pop that down. Then I'll get one of these nails. And what I've done is, so, so it's easier for you to see what's on this side it's flush on the end there. So that's one part. Now, if you're trying to be really frugal, you can just use one nail thing. Only problem with that is that it can move around quite a lot. So I like to put two nails into every individual section and finish it off with one more at the top. So there you can see the six nails. And then I'm just gonna repeat this on all the other sides. So I've got it on this side, and you can see it's holding it together nicely. I've just gotta go and do the same on this side, about the same distance away from the end. So as you can see from the single pallet, you get quite a decent sized area of growing space. But the only problem is that you've gotta attach it. I feel that the easiest way of attaching these is by placing them on the ground. So you're just doing this by looking at it, looking at a straight side, turn it over, and I will nail into them like that. So what you're actually doing here is you're creating a 90 degree angle. And then I've got the longer nails, which are a bit harder to salvage, but it is possible. And because they're harder to salvage, I'll, I'll just be using one per kind of block. So again, I'm just looking down, trying to keep it straight. And there's one. And then do it for the second one. You can also use a, a, a pre-made hole, which can make it actually less likely for the nail to bend. I'm gonna prop this up like that, then I'm going to get this section, and I'm just going to bring it about to where it is, so it's, it's kind of flush on this side, bring it in, and you can start either with the first or the second. Another thing you can do is always just sit down on it. And again, just adjust until you're happy. So as you can see, you've got to be sure just to twist it so it at least looks flush. If you do want to have enough nails, you can always attach those two, but there's enough strength in there to hold the soil. A bit of an easier way of doing it is to actually put these blocks ready on both ends, which means once it's up, it's really easy to attach to the other one.
be very lucky with that one. And there we have the two ends. And attach it there. Remembering, looking at how this is. So this long end, this long side is gonna overlap the end of this one as it does with that. And that's another corner done. We're really close to finishing now. I've just got to attach this block here and then attach this panel to the end. And this is a raised bed all completed and it's really easy to do. And probably if you had maybe a spare Saturday or Sunday, you could churn out four to maybe even seven of these raised beds. And the thing about that is that you do a lot of work initially Hopefully for the next five years, these should last quite well. Now, of course, they're not gonna last as more expensive raised beds, but the important thing about this is that it's completely for free in terms of the materials. All you need is your time. So I think it's a really effective thing to do and you can always play around with design. So you're very welcome to make them shorter and you can cut these in half or you can start attaching them to make them longer you can really start having a good play around with what raised beds you want to create. So hopefully it's inspired you to try it out or give it a go, or maybe you can think of a few people who might like this, but I hope that this video has shown how simple it is. And if you have any further comments or queries about this, then do let me know down in the comments. And the final thing is make sure you pre-order my book. So thank you very much.